So let me just start. So since the last episode of PS5 event happened, we got the release date, price range, and games that were revealed. Also, pre-orders went live. The launch date for the PS5 is officially November 12th for the United States, Japan, Canada, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, and South Korea. The rest of the world is going to go a week later on the 19th. The digital-only version is going to go for $399, and the regular version is $499. So before we get into the launch lineup, mm -hmm. what do you think about the launch date and what do you think about the pricing? We finally got the pricing. So pricing, I think this is spot on. I think I've been telling, I think, and not just me, everyone's pretty much been on board that the system has to be $500. We knew, especially once we got Xbox's price. So for a long time, we've been saying the system's got to be 500 I was always saying the disc click was, was going to be about 50 bucks cheaper because that's how much like a disc drive really costs. And there is no difference in power, luckily. So I think it's just even even better price because in 2013, you were paying $400 for the PS4. So essentially, inflation, all that great stuff, well, not great stuff, but all that stuff, you know, seven years later, you can buy your new system for the same price, which is mind-blowing. So the yeah. pricing is spot on. I think it's exactly where it needs to be. And I think it's also where people guessed. The date is, again, lands in the window we were expecting. Obviously, we knew it would be around, you know, the first week of November, or we thought maybe the third week of November, right before, like, the holidays and stuff. Under no circumstance would I have, <laughs> would have guessed a Thursday that they would choose a Thursday. Things are usually released in America and other places, too, either Tuesday or Friday. Yep. That's just kind of how it's always been. They went and chose a Thursday, November 12th. I don't know why. I don't know if maybe they didn't know Xbox because Xbox comes out the tenth, if I'm correct. So, I believe so. Yeah. So they're that they're the Tuesday before. So these these systems, you know, the Xbox One and the PS4 launched uh, weeks apart, or I want to say two weeks apart, two or something like that. Where these systems are launching two days apart, <laughs> um, which is a, a ridiculous thing. But it lines up with what we were expecting. It lines up with some of those bigger games that we knew were kind of foreshadowing with like Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed. We knew those games were going to line up with the next gen and it works out. So with that stuff, I'm completely happy and satisfied with. Yeah, no, I really I really really like the the price range and it is kind of bugged out the fact like there's always been the thing that people are like, "Oh, gaming is so expensive." But when adjusted for inflation especially, the gaming has been getting cheaper. And the fact that in 2020 we we have a console that's launching $200 less than its predecessors two generations before the fact that the ps3 was six hundred dollars yeah and the fact that we're getting a console that's infinitely more powerful infinitely more powerful for two hundred dollars less than that is, is a really incredible thing and the great thing about that that i don't see a ton of people talking about the fact that is like if you're not hung up on physical games which if you're looking at statistically that's becoming a minority at this point it's past the 50 percent threshold on certain publishers for mm -hmm. digital to physical players so we're talking about a growing population if not the majority at this point you get to have a full powered next gen experience 4k native at $400, which is actually undercutting Xbox by $100. Now, obviously, Xbox has the Series X at $499, but that's a disc version, that and that goes against, you know, a PlayStation's $499 version. But again, if you're not hung up on disc, you can get something just as powerful, maybe a little bit of a power differential, for $100 cheaper. So that, that's a really, really awesome thing that they were able to, to get it down that much. I would have never guessed that just simply removing the disk drive could they would justify you know like a hundred dollar price cut that that's pretty awesome and uh so you got the disk based version right uh i didn't have a choice i didn't have a yeah. choice but yeah. i do have the disk based version uh pre-ordered yeah and i i got the digital version and we'll get into the absolute mayhem that was the pre-orders after the event went live uh but yeah so I, i'm digital only i guess for playstation for this generation I, I was contemplating like uh i'm gonna keep you know my eyes open if i could find a disc based version but then i thought about it and i was like honestly the amount of ps5 discs that i'm probably gonna get is gonna be limited especially the fact that now they have uh, and they've had this for some time but the the way you could pre-install about a week or two earlier before the game comes out yeah. even with my internet it's not always the best but it's that's more than enough time for me to download the game and be able to play it day one so that's probably it, it works out for me it, it's kind of forced me to go all digital but uh i'm not necessarily resenting that if i want physical games i'll buy genesis games you know what i mean like i don't <laughs> yeah. necessarily need physical ps5 games 
yeah, my plan was to get the digital version, especially when I saw the drastic price difference when I was like a hundred dollars. And obviously, they can eat a little bit of that price because now you have to buy their software through them. You know, you can't buy digital codes for PlayStation. Like, like you can't go ask for Miles Morales digital code at GameStop anymore. This that ended about four years ago when I was yeah. still at GameStop, where we stopped doing that. You can obviously go get like PSN cards, so you have to get your games through them so i'm assuming that's why they were able to do such a drastic difference because it's like well we'll make it up on the other end where you have to get your games through us yeah software sales yeah you're through the software sales so my plan was to get that because i was like well if anything i'll go playstation full you know for their exclusives and their ips and you know for games i want to get platinum trophies for and then i'll get yeah everything else on pc or xbox or whatever it may be didn't work in my favor, but at least this way we have, you know, both consoles so we can get a, a nice discussion going on, you know, when these consoles release. Yeah, and then, uh, if anything, me getting this console just makes me regret not going digital sooner because I'm looking at my shelf of, like, a ton, like, dozens of physical PS4 games that I'm like, well, there goes those. I, I, can't, I can't play those. <laughs> well, I mean, luckily, you're not one of those people. We don't sell our hardware, so... No. I'll be able in to hook a, up my you know, PS4 if I need to. You could to. always hook up your PS4 in the worst case. It's just always brutal sometimes booting up like the last gen console when <laughs> I'm going to get used to that PS5 speed and then I'm going to load yeah. it up and the UI is going to barely work and I'm like, oh joy, it's fun to be back here. Yeah, that's true. And you're on a launch PS4 still, correct? Yes, I got, mm-hmm. I got the shine and everything. So. You got the, the half a... The little jet engine. Okay. All right, so I guess we could talk about the launch lineup. They revealed it, and so we're going to go game by game. So the first one is Astro's Playroom. That one, it, they already revealed it's going to come pre-installed in the console. We have the Demon Souls remake by Bluepoint. Destruction mm-hmm. All-Stars, they also showed that off. Spider-Man Miles Morales, obviously by Insomniac. And then Sackboy, a big adventure, which is going to be basically a little big planet-inspired platformer that they also showed off. So, what do you think about this launch lineup, especially compared to previous generations? Are you happy with it? How many of these games are you even interested in? All right, so, I mean, Asteroids Playroom, you know, that's fine. I I was always more concerned that they were going to try to sell this game. When they're like, listen, it's going to be pre-installed just the way that Playroom is on PS4s. I'm like, cool, it'll be there to show off, I don't know, how the DualSense really works, all these little things, which is fine. So, you can't really get mad at free software. (laughs) Um... So that'd be weird. Uh, Demon Souls, man, that game looks fantastic. Yeah, Holy, it does. I'm not even a huge, and I know you aren't either. You spoke about this on the news that you know Demon Souls and Dark Souls aren't really our kind of thing. And now Demon Souls, I've never played. I did see a little bit. I understand that that's you know the precursor to what ended up being Dark Souls and all that stuff. There's something about this game that's kind of calling me. I don't know what it is that I'm just like I'm like interested in it. And I know I'm going to rage, and I know I'm going to freak out, and I know what I'm getting myself into, but I want it. And I don't know what it is, it's just the aesthetic is really working for me this time. And these games are random for me. You know, I don't really play any Demon, uh, Dark Souls, sorry, but I did enjoy Bloodborne like crazy. I don't play, I don't really like playing the Neo games, but uh, Sekiro was was my flavor. I don't know what it is. Dark Souls just, I mean, Demon Souls is just starting to really struck a chord for me so having that at launch is gonna be good because i'm not gonna have an overwhelming launch lineup technically we have you know smaller titles but fewer titles so i may be able to give the time that i can into demon souls will i beat it no absolutely not (laughs) but we we, we both know (laughs) i'm not gonna beat this game (laughs) me neither but i want it i want to see it and i want to see it run also i want to support blue point to the max and just get more of these crazy, crazy good remakes out of them. Destruction All Stars. I did not know. It's, and I read this. You know, I read our rundown last night. I can't. I didn't know that was a launch line because I haven't been able to pre-order that game anywhere. That, if I'm not mistaken, that's the like Fortnite-looking twisted metal game, right? Yeah, it should have been a twisted metal game. Yeah. Gotcha. So I, okay. I wasn't even aware that's a launch lineup because when I went to pre-order places, and unless it went live later, I didn't know. I may get that as long as there's a split screen. That way I can play with someone who's here just to kind of check that out. I doubt I'd probably get into it that much. Also, I got to depend on the pricing because, as we know, the pricing has been 
revealed to be scaled. So some games will be yeah. cheaper and some games will be yeah, more. Yeah, we gotta talk about that. Yeah. So and I'm not gonna pay seventy dollars for destruction. Hell no. Spider Man Miles Morales. Now we're talking. <sighs> and I'm gonna save it later till we talk about what games were revealed. Obviously gonna get this and it's probably gonna be my most played ps5 launch game i'm obviously super excited for this but i'll save that when we talk about the the reveal and a sackboy big adventure looks cool i've always been a big fan of sackboy and i know you did too Mm -hmm. and i was always more like i don't want to make my own games with sackboy i kind of want to play a sackboy game which is why i kind of like the little big planet cart even though it wasn't the best so this will probably be you know i'm worried because this is kind of filling the knack um (laughs) Yeah, uh, spot yeah, for launch where Knack was there and stuff. Obviously, I think Sackboy Big Adventure will probably be a little bit better. It won't be, you know, it'll be a nice platformer. That's another one where I'm just like, well, it depends what it really reveals itself to be. I'm not too worried about it. I may wait on that. Obviously, there's no point in me getting seven launch games when I'm not going to play seven games at once. So I'm excited. It's You have a nice variety. You have, obviously... This is just more what was revealed at the conference. You have all these other third-party games. You know, Assassin's Creed will be out at this time. All these other games that you can be playing at the time. But I think the fact that they have, like, you know, the hard, gritty game, you know, with Demon Souls, and then you have the Spider-Man, which is going to sell gangbusters. You have the more kid-friendly between the Astro and the Little Big Planet. So I think they really hit a spot of everything. And you have Destruction All-Stars for more of that multiplayer online, mix. Yeah. Yeah, so the real thing they're only really <laughs> missing, and they can really lean on a Call of Duty for that, is a shooter. But again, with Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, God, <laughs> with with that being there, you can kind of rely on your third-party relationship. And Sony and Activision have been in bed this whole generation, so I'm assuming that's going to continue on into the next one. So they're really well rounded out for a launch title for a launch title series. Yeah, I mean, I'm not mad at it. it launch lineups are tough. They're they're really tough to to get, and very seldomly do you see like someone absolutely nail it. And I think this, I wouldn't say they nailed it this time, but this is more than enough. I think so. Uh, the only must get game for me right here is Miles Morales, and we're gonna talk about that later. Uh, Demon Souls, just like you, I'm very fascinated by, and everything in my mind is screaming, don't get this, you don't have the facilities for this, big man, you can't do this, you, you, you know you can't do this, and I'm like, yes, I do know I can't do this, it's like when I bought Dark Souls 3, and I'm like, oh, but it looks fun, everybody's playing, the lore, and I'm like, bro, like, you don't have the reflexes for that, man, you know that, Castlevania is whooping you 30 years later, like, come on, man, but, um, yeah, man, I'm intrigued by it. The only apprehension is obviously the $70 price range. Mm -hmm. Um, For me, I'm not necessarily... And I guess we could talk about the the price differentials here. Because, yeah, I pretty much have the same thoughts as you with uh, Sackboy and Astros. Cute little platformers. I'm probably going to dabble in one of them. Uh, Astros comes in, so I'm going to have that. Sackboy, I like Little Big Planet. I love the soundtrack. As long as they keep the spirit of Little Big Planet in it, I'm there. That's all, is... As long as they have the amazing soundtrack and real crafty look to it, I'm, I'm all for it because I love that world. But again, it's been a very long time since I've mm-hmm. really dived into a Little Big Planet game. It's probably the second one, but very much the first one. The third one I didn't really touch at all. So uh, it, it's been a while. But yeah, the price ranges. So what they announced was some games are going to have a $70 launch game. And obviously with you know season passes and stuff like that, we've seen $80, $90 digital collectors editions whatever but this is just 70 dollars base game what are your feelings about them playing around with price like that we knew this was coming eventually they've had the 60 dollar price range pretty much what since the playstation 2 or something like that yeah and i think scaling makes sense because it's funny because i was looking at it and i want to say somebody tweeted out this weekend an old eb games flyer or whatever company it was where like donkey kong country was like 70 bucks at release And then other games were like 50, 40. And I think it's good to return to those scales because I believe Miles Morales is not a full 70 because it's not like the sequel. But uh, Spider-Man 2 will obviously come out at 70. Demon's Souls is a full 70. I think that I'm okay with this because instead of getting what we were all expecting is a overall every game is now going to be $70, you know, $10 price hike, which is not that bad including you know inflation and the value of the dollar now to what it was seven years ago to what it was 10 years ago to what it was in 2006 yeah so these games 
are still cheap for especially what we're getting for some of these games imagine you know the people who are like demon souls is their game the amount of hours they're going to put into that game is going to way surpass 70 bucks you know yeah. if you look at it that way you know the witcher 3 could is i always say i always use that as an example the witcher could have come up for 100 bucks for the amount of content that was in there so i was okay with this i'm i'm glad not too many people were like hurt by this and i think literally the sports games ea and some of the call of duty stuff soften the blow because they've all come out talking about how if you want the free upgrade for some of these games some of these games get complete free upgrade but i know there was some of the sports games that or i think it was call of duty as well that if you want the upgrade to the new systems when they launch you have to get the 70 dollar version and so that stuff really helped the blow because at least sony was up front well sort of and they're like listen some of these titles have to be 70 bucks because that's what it costs to make them now. Well, you know, behind the scenes and all these extra stuff. So I'm okay with the pricing. It, it's not like, now if you were talking like all games were jumping $80, $90, that's when we have an issue. A $10 price up itch for some of the bigger titles. Like, I'm not going to have a problem with that at all. Yeah, I'm not mad at $70 games. I am not in favor of a $70 standard because yeah. I already feel some games have already shown at $60 that they are not worth that full price. So like a game like Resident Evil 3, I feel like would have trouble justifying 60, let alone $70 price run. Mm -hmm. So I think people just need to be honest with themselves in terms of publishers and developers about where they should fall. So I'm okay with a $70 game existing, but you have to be judicious when you use that price range. So again, yeah, you brought up Witcher, maybe Cyberpunk is a great idea. Demon yeah. Souls, it all depends on the player. If you're one of those people who are hardcore enough out of it, yeah, you can get $70 out of it. But if you're someone like us that are like mm, maybe uh we will do good yeah maybe that's not something we want to fork out 70 that's something you're gonna have to make a choice people are gonna have to be judicious with their dollar and i feel like they already had to do that at 60 dollars. but certainly at 70 dollars and above you have to be judicious with how much are you gonna get out of this game so i'm okay with some people playing around with 70 but by no means should that be a standard thing that a lot of games no, especially annualized franchises don't yeah. even come near that 70 dollars price tag stay away activision stay away ea this is not for you guys this yeah, is I'm, cu I'm really curious how these sports games are gonna do because people are really upset with <laughs> even though they're selling a gangbusters because they do every year the sports games people are really tearing apart uh quality wise and they were charging 60 and 70 if you wanted a special edition, I think, of like 2K. So you get Mamba edition so you can bring it to the next gen. And it's all this weird stuff. Those games are going to have a lot harder time justifying 70 bucks. And again, that's why I'm glad it's more of a scale. And PlayStation's actually been doing this for a while. If you remember, the Ratchet & Clank remake launched at 40. Yes. So that was fantastic. Obviously, uh, I assume Ratchet & Clank drift apart. Rift yeah, drift, whatever it's called, Drift Apart, Drift Apart, is going to probably be a 70 because it is a full-fledged sequel. Yeah, it's definitely going up for sure. Whether 60 yeah. or 70, I'm not sure. But it, yeah, it may even just go from 40 to 60, which is a complete difference because, I mean, Insomniac's pulling crazy stuff out of their hats over there. Yeah, all I ever will say is price things what you want. You just have to justify it no matter what it is. So yes. if you could justify it and you're like, hey, the base game's 100 hours long, yeah, charge what you have to charge. If they wanted to charge a little bit more expensive for Persona 6 when that comes out, I'm not mad at that. But in the event that, you know, they try to launch the next Madden or N NBA game or, you know, whatever, Call of Duty 70. expansion or whatever, for 70, you're, you're bugging out with that. that. That's insane because, again, you're not – the value's not there to justify that price range. So. Absolutely. I guess we can jump into the more controversial aspect of what happened with the PS5 lately, which is pre-orders went up a few hours pretty much after the presentation with little to no warning. Uh, PlayStation said in the following tweet, let's be honest, PS5 pre-orders could have been a lot smoother. We apologize for that. Over the next few days, we will release more PS5 consoles for pre-order. Retailers will share more details and more PS5s will become available through the end of the year. So pretty much for you guys who weren't paying too much attention, the PS5 event goes live. We get all the information. We don't get a lot of information about when pre-orders are going to go live in terms of that video. But very shortly after, GameStop Ireland are starting to go live. Walmart starts to go live. Target goes shortly after there. And out of nowhere, suddenly we're in the pre-order craze. Out of nowhere, no heads up from PlayStation. That Their little email thing that's like, hey, sign up for a chance. That doesn't happen until like a day or two later. 
So it's just absolute mayhem. People are mm-hmm. scrambling to get it. We were able to get our consoles amongst all that chaos, luckily, just barely. <laughs> um, but yeah, what what a strange rollout. And it's so strange that pretty much, yeah, even PlayStation acknowledged that like, yeah, that wasn't the smoothest way. And this was very obviously a case of retailers breaking their launch date pretty much. Um, they get a little antsy for whatever reason made Walmart go. I don't know. I've been seeing that tweet roll around, which is like, oh, you want to wait? We're, we're not going to. So <laughs> they just went ahead. And obviously, the moment Walmart went, the rest of them are not going to lose out on sales and craze. So naturally, they're going to launch two right after them. So it, some people blame Sony. Some people don't. I think this is just a mismanagement of everything. If they're able to hold people to embargoes for game details, I would imagine... You could probably, if you really wanted to, hold people to an embargo for launching pre-orders. But for whatever reason, they couldn't. So, Steve, what's your opinion on the whole pre-order situation? And then we could talk about the whole... The way the influencers seem to get a code in their emails, but nobody else did. I want to talk about that too after. Yeah, so it was... What a disaster. Because I felt... So after the conference ended, they, they ended the conference with the release date, the prices, and all that stuff. So I was like, cool. Shortly after they tweeted, because you know, uh, homeboy Jeff Keeley over there also should not have been on Twitter that night. <laughs> um, he goes, I believe, or whatever, I hear that retailers are going to start pre-orders tomorrow. Sony then tweets a little bit after that, starting tomorrow, different retailers at different times are going to open their pre-orders. Yeah. Which, they don't have a control of what time, you know, Walmart updates their website and stuff like that. So, I'm like, cool, I can rest easy tonight. Tomorrow, I'm going to have my notifications on deck. I'm going to have my laptop, and it's time. Not even, I don't know, 30 minutes, Jeff Keeley again, man. Oh, pre-orders can go live any minute. Like, what? Whoa, whoa, what do you mean? I was walking out the shower when I got the notification. I'm like, what do you mean? You guys just said tomorrow. And I for a second, I was like, you know, maybe it'll be some weird mom-pop, small, weird Indian or like other countries. Amazon like, France. Yeah, someone's like that. I'm like, I'm not worried about it. <laughs> I don't follow Walmart on Twitter, but someone retweeted it. Walmart says, whatever that tweet was, why wait, whatever, pre-orders go live now. And I panicked like crazy. There's no way this is how it should have been. I don't know if there was a miscommunication. Somebody's rep or someone somewhere messed up because the live the pre-orders weren't supposed to go live. And then at that point, it was all or nothing. Target would try to, obviously, they want to be out there. Best Buy was trying to get out there. I'm calling GameStops, and I, again, we're in the middle of a pandemic. I'm not going to GameStops casually. I'm calling my three closest GameStops. Like, are your pre-orders lives? One of their stores, they're like, yeah, out of nowhere. They had no, and I trust this person, they had no notification that they were going live that day. They're like, yeah, we got 12 pre-orders just showed up in our system. And obviously, by the time I would have got there, they were already sold out. They had like eight people while I was on the phone with them coming and asking for it. Other GameStops didn't get it. Like I called my other GameStop, and they're like, "Yeah, we like we keep getting calls." He goes, two other stores got their pre-orders. We got none. One store I called, they're like, "Yeah, we got three all digital editions. That's it. Not that they were sold out. They're like, that's what went live in their system." So I think there was definitely a mess control. There was definitely a panic control that was lacking. I think also the fact that we've waited so long for these systems, people have also gotten so antsy, and I think this stuff was always supposed to go live way sooner, because I'm assuming on the back end, Walmart had this already up, and then the page went live too early, or someone someone gave them the go to open that page <laughs> at that time, and it caused a panic. Luckily, yeah, you, know, yeah. you know, sorry, you can go. Oh, no, I was just going to yeah. say, I hey, I, I don't mean to be Mr. I told you so. But check the episodes in the past. I told you guys yeah. the pre-orders were going to be a mess. I knew it was going to be a mess. I, For many things, the online infrastructure is always a messy situation. Plus, it's an in-demand console. Plus, we're in the COVID era, which means that supply is going to be constrained and everything's a absolute mess. And everybody's trying to out-market and out-release each other. And it's just, I knew this was going to be chaos. And I honestly was not banking on my ability to even be able to get one of these, to be honest with you. So the fact that we were able to do it is a freaking miracle. I have no no clue how we pulled that off. Yeah, I guess we just got lucky in in a sense. And like I was telling you off uh, off recording, every day that I don't get a cancellation email is like, 
I, it's another like because we're so close to these release we're yeah. under eight weeks i want to say that's great like, we're under two months for, for release and it's nerve-wracking because amazon's already sent the email saying hey whoever oh and that's not even the thing that amazon at least over here in the northeast amazon went live with their pre-orders at like 2 a.m and don't know why by the time i got up for work at 3 a.m 3 30 a.m and i saw the notification went the page was dead amazon sent the email that hey pre-orders were too many we're not going to get all these at, we're not going to get these all out at launch these are the same guys who couldn't get me tony hawk at launch they couldn't get me most of my games at launch they couldn't get me certain games at launch animal crossing all these games so obviously i knew amazon was not going to get those at launch walmart has been better at it so far and i heard apparently best buy did too has been better where they're like they keep opening and closing it because they're like they take a bunch of pre-orders they make sure they can satisfy them and then they can kind of let them so we're, we're feeling good but we did also call this and people are going to kind of look at the xbox one and the main thing xbox has is that they're t- they have like a time schedule they can't control when the websites go down when people crash it that's not what people were upset about with playstation they're upset that you you know you told us a different day then they go live 30 minutes later when people are on their way home from work they think they have the time they think oh, i can get home and do this and tomorrow i'll worry about it. i'll take tomorrow off from work whatever it have you be and then you go and just botch it unfortunately yeah i it, it's a weird situation um I just keep hearing that clip over and over again when the marketing director is talking where he's like, don't worry, you'll have ample time for pre-orders. And it's like, man, the literal opposite. It's one thing to be like, oh, only a day heads up. Well, it's not ideal, but that's fine. But I mean, we're talking 30 minutes, 40 minutes. And that's why right after the conference, I immediately opened my computer. I sent you got you the picture that yep. I'm like, I know, because I know it's going to be a mess. I, I know after the conference, the way they were talking, I was like, okay, things are going to start going live soon. I'm pretty sure somebody's going to break it. And so uh, there we go. Now, I also wanted to bring up something that I haven't seen any stories about. I haven't seen too many people talking about, but I think it's very interesting because I've been cl- paying a close eye on it. So a couple of weeks ago, you remember when we signed our PSN onto PlayStation's official site for a chance to be able to get a PS4 mm-hmm. or PS5, sorry. And... So we all did that, and we were all wondering, like, what are the qualifications to be able to get this? And some people are like, well, maybe a heavy activity on your account. Maybe if you got a lot of trophies, maybe you've had your account for a long time. This will maybe increase your chance because it looks like they might be prioritizing the, the best of the best or the fans of the fans on uh, the PlayStation ecosystem. So that's beautiful. Lo and behold, maybe two days later after the event or something like that, I'm starting to see all these tweets. And every single influencer related to playstation magically seem to get those emails saying like hey you've been chosen which is very interesting considering the fact not that normal people or not not normal but non-famous people didn't get that they certainly did but the fact that every single influencer seemed to qualify is very Mm -hmm. interesting and it makes me wonder like what was the point even (laughs) of having the mainstream public sign up for something that was very obviously you were just going to prioritize the people with the biggest followings online as opposed to the people who played the most so that was a very interesting thing because again i saw some non-famous people post that they got the email notification to be able to get the ps5 but i just think it's not a coincidence to see every single ign game spot polygon kotaku employee mm-hmm. all seem to get that email and very seldomly did you see someone non-famous get that email and on top of that once they redeem all that i did see a follow-up that was like hey there's still playstation's live for there so they had excess <laughs> like that's, that's so that's one thing yeah it's insane right so yeah I, I saw that go out when i saw these emails going out i checked my email because i was one of the as soon as that thing went up i put my you know id in there i've been on places for a long time i've been using the same account for a long time since the ps3 psp era so i'm like maybe i have a good chance like i you know i'm constantly active hours whatever and then i see all these influencers all these people and i'm like okay so maybe from my understanding they did two waves they did those guys first obviously yep and uh they won't ever admit that that's fine and then i see a few in i don't know not influencers people be like hey i just got this email and you get a specific code and you have to get that invitation to go redeem it on the website and i see all these people tweeting like hey playstation still says they have it in stock but it's locked behind this invitation thing 
And I'm like, that's super weird because how what was the criteria? You never told us the criteria. You shouldn't have even let us waste our time signing up and hoping for that if you weren't going to tell us what we needed to do to get it. And it's whatever. It's weird that they said they had so many in stock, but they weren't sending out enough emails. When I know tons of people did that. And I'm like, well, and I kept looking like, are normal people getting this? Uh, a buddy of mine calls me and says he got the invitation because yeah. he he works at Best Buy. And by the time he went to work the next day, they were weird out of like pre-orders and stuff. I'm like, you work there. How are you? You don't have the hookup. You didn't have one of your buddies like put one down for you. Yeah. And uh, so he got it. Now it is good to note that they the system's the same price, but they have a lot of tax on it. I, I don't know what exactly oh, was really? going on because he sent me the the receipt. I don't know why he sent me the receipt, but he sent me his <laughs> receipt. And he's like, "Yo, look, I got it." I'm like, "Why is it so much?" But whatever it may be, so it's maybe weird they're because, not shipping it from. Maybe they're shipping it from somewhere else. These this batch. Yeah, it's it's weird, weird, weird stuff. I don't know what they thought they were doing there with that. You know, because you wanna, you know, they really started. They're still in the middle of launching their PlayStation Direct like purchase site. But you're going to expose it this way. And I understand they didn't want to just open it up to everyone and then have their website crash. But this was just even more insulting when you were obviously choosing your favorites. You were choosing, or I'm not going to go through names, but specific people yeah. that we know you guys are in bed with, obviously. The people that you're going to send them three consoles anyway so they can review it weeks in advance and stuff like that. So it's like, that's weird when your people who have been supporting you actually giving you money are being pushed to the side it's it's again everything about the way they did this about the id registration and the release and pre-orders in general was really just a mess and i'm not sure who was in charge of that or what got out of hand but it's yeah, unacceptable my, my frustrations don't come from the fact that i didn't get that because obviously we secured our own pre-orders that's fine mm -hmm. my frustration with this whole pre-order launch is the fact that they say one thing and they seem to be doing another so if you're having this online, almost raffle-like thing to be able to get a chance, like many companies do with hot launches in clothing and, and different stuff in tech, we've seen this before. But it's really just a way to prioritize and basically send out a glorified PR kit or review kit. Mm -hmm. That is what I take issue with. Just like when they say, hey, you're going to have ample time to do this and do something else. That even their plan was a day later. They yes the plan the retailers broke it but even their plan was only a day later that's not ample time and and not to mention we didn't know the price until right before so what about people who are more constrained for cash who needed all that prep time to know exactly how much they have for the launch you only gave them a day and so and then on top of that they broke that so they definitely don't stand a chance so I just feel like there's not there's some kind of not customer friendly stuff and as much as I love what they're doing with the PS5 I love this console I'm getting this console I'm a big fan of PlayStation I think it's important to hold them accountable for very obvious slip ups and non customer friendly practices because I feel like this whole pre-order launch was kind of botched and I don't like all the miscommunications yeah, and yeah, and it's, yeah, like you're saying, it's almost ins it's you know it's insulting, or I was saying it's insulting in certain aspects because like you're one day in advance, you could have even been like, oh, pre-orders open Friday, that would have been way more understanding, even though it's still short notice. But like I wasn't prepared, prepared because under no, I mean, I was prepared, and I, but I didn't have my accounts lined up the way I needed to, so I had to grab my wife's card and be like, <laughs> yeah. oh, hey, hold on, I need your card real quick because. Sony really screwed up and I thought I would have a little bit more time to move things around that way I needed to that I was prepared to do but uh it's but you're the same for the people who need to know that and people you know we're early on in the week over here in the Amer you know in America we kind of pay rent on the first or mortgages on the first so people were just kind of maybe not even had their next check yet or whatever it may be and it's like you want to give people the opportunity to purchase your item like that's how you're gonna get sales give us the opportunity which is why it was a big deal when they came out with their tweet because sony's really not too often coming out and being like hey we messed up so they came out hey that's why we with their tweet they're like listen it wasn't the way we wanted to we're gonna do everything we can to get more of these out at launch and pre-orders even out soon yeah and to wrap up this section so before we move on because if you haven't noticed this is gonna be a long freaking show yeah um, <laughs> 
this kind of strategy of like launching out of nowhere with no heads up, no price or anything like that, this plays into two people's hands pretty much because you guys put everybody in a situation where influencers with contacts benefit from this because again, they have their contacts. They'll be able to secure. You best believe that the IGN guys are going to be able to get PS5s, no problem. It's not going to be a big deal. Mm -hmm. But this also plays into the hands of the scalpers because they're ready to go. They got the bots going. Price is not money is not a problem. They're flipping consoles left and right. They got the money for this. But the average consumer is the one who takes the hit. So that's why I wanted to bring this up because again, like scalping culture is such a big issue in the game industry, especially with like these new devices and games and stuff like that. And I feel like in many ways PlayStation inadvertently played right into their hands and gave them the perfect scenario basically to grab up so many of the consoles and be able to flip them i went on ebay yesterday low end it was 800 high end i'm seeing 1200 1500 bundles Mm -hmm. reselling online and i'm just hoping and praying people are not falling for that and are just remaining patient because i would hate to see people burned like that yeah especially so you know i was always under the impression and this happened with me with my switch where i was like if i get two switches i'm gonna sell the other one for the exact same amount I paid for it. I wasn't yeah. going to scalp it. So if for whatever that's reason... Flipping. I That's not a scalp. Yeah. Yeah. If I, if, if I would have got a second PS4 for the reason, I would have found someone who didn't get one and be like, hey, I'll just I'll charge you whatever I had to pay with tax and shipping or whatever it may be. And I call even. I'm not gaining. But, you know, PlayStation, you know, it is what it is. But hopefully this starts to... It's weird because it's like we all we hope that more pre-orders come through and stuff like that, but we're also so close to launch and it's just scary uh, for people who really want the system and haven't been able to secure one. 